With the rank of general, Clayton Abernathy, otherwise known as Hawk, is one of the leading G.I. Joes both on the battlefield and off. So let's talk about him. Before we begin though, I want to thank you, whether you're returning or it's your first time here for watching JLS Comics. Don't forget to subscribe, we do upload content just like this every week. Alright, let's jump right into our video. The G.I. Joe, a real American hero comic book debuted in 1982 with the launch of the TV series and FCC regulations forbidding companies from selling toys and merchandise during animated shows. The comic book was a perfect companion and circumvention of those regulations. Depending on who you ask, whether you watch the Sunbow cartoon or read the comic books, you'll hear that Hawk is the commanding officer or duke is so there is some discrepancy depending on what your access point is but we'll do our best to break it all down here for you easily clayton or clay as he likes to be called grew up in denver colorado in a real loaded family he went on to west point seeking a career as an officer he did graduate west point near the top of his class and was commissioned as a second lieutenant according to his file card he also graduated from advanced infantry training covert ops school served on cadre north atlantic range command as well as a missile and radar training Training. During the Vietnam War, he was stationed at home and would receive officers at home when their tours of duty were over, the only ones who was there when Snake Eyes returned from his deployment. Unfortunately, this meant it fell on him to inform him that no one showed up because they'd all died in a horrific car wreck. There is a G.I. Joe named Lieutenant Falcon as well. According to Buzz Dixon, who was the writer for a lot of the episodes of the show, Falcon was originally supposed to be Hawk's son before he was made into Duke's half-brother. And according to Larry Hama, Hasbro was at first, not too thrilled about having a character named Hawk due to the politics around the word Hawk. In politics, a Hawk is someone who favors war over debate. They'll go to fight first and engage in diplomacy later. Hama said in a different interview that while he based their names on people he knew in real life, he didn't give a whole lot of thought to characters like Duke and Hawk because they're authority figures and Hama was focused on the point of view of the grunts. That said, Hama's original idea for the G.I. Joes when he was first approached to write the title was a carryover from another book he was putting together called Fury Force. Fury Force for Marvel Comics was to focus on the son of Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So he took some of the concepts from this and rolled it over to G.I. Joe's, but because of this, Fury Jr. from Fury Force is a precursor of sorts to Hawk. So anyways, Hawk earned his greatest experience on the battlefield as a troop commander on the front lines with his soldiers. Hawk led his troops during operations in the country of Barovia, and it was this experience that earned him the respect of fellow Joe's and what set him apart from others in the command structure. Before General Flagg's death in the comic books, Hawk reported up to him as he was their primary liaison with the Pentagon. While still a full colonel and after a court-martial that put him on the radar of General Flagg, Hawk was put in charge of a new special counter-terrorist group, Delta, codenamed G.I. Joe. He quickly recruited Snake Eyes and his old unit mate named Stucker, among the rest, and you can see that here. Their first live mission was to rescue Dr. Burkhart from Cobra and the Baroness. When General Flagg died, Hawk became the acting commanding officer of the G.I. Joes, but it wasn't until General Austin retired post-myocardial infarction, heart attack, that Hawk went from colonel to brigadier general, and thereby receiving operational command of the G.I. Joes. He was later promoted to the rank of Major General, but as General, Hawk took on Duke as his second-in-command and his field officer, and they would deploy the Joes on their missions. When the G.I. Joes invaded the town of Springfield, which was really a secret Cobra headquarters, it proved disastrous and really embarrassing for the unit. The secret cabal that included the likes of General Dyson, General Hollingsworth, and General Ryan suspended the team, they shut down the pit, and initiated an investigation into Hawk's assault and whether he had orders to do so. With the pit deactivated, Cobra attacked with their bats, which were the battle android troopers, and completely destroyed the base, killing two of the generals. It was General Hollingsworth who reactivated the Joes, with Hawk now back in command. But then the Joes invaded Cobra Island while Serpentor and Cobra Commander were embroiled in civil war. General Hawk and General Hollingsworth were arrested, and so they were charged with conducting the invasion operation without official authorization. And it actually took a Cobra named Destro to help out Hawk and prove him innocent by putting this whole thing on a live TV broadcast. In 1988, in the pages of the British comic book Action Force Monthly, Flint declined the command of Action Force European operations, and so operational command of that also fell to Hawk for this detachment of G.I. Joe. The Battle of Benzene, which was issue 113 of the comic book series, took place as the title was actually winding down. Writer Larry Hama was told that he could kill off some of the characters that were no longer being put out as action figures. So a character named Sneak Peek and many of the high-tech Battle Force 2000 characters perished in the firefight. Hawk was in a terrible position of being in command, but also needing to consider the demands of the Emir of Benzene 
Benzine, who was right in the command tent with him, looking over his shoulder at all the monitors, all the communique, listening to all of the radio chatter. Sneak Peek was ordered to Abu Talib Square and shot down in the street. Meanwhile, Battle Force 2000 was amidst the Emir's oil tanks when Cobra Commander ordered an artillery bombardment on the position, and it was a tragic blow to Hawk and to the G.I. Joes. And then, in 1994, Hawk retired the colors, and the G.I. Joe team was decommissioned. This coincided with issue 155 of the comic book series and the cancellation of the long-running title. Later, a publisher named Devil's Due took over the publication rights, and in their titles, Hawk himself was promoted to Lieutenant General and became a part of that secret cabal of generals that he came up against in the past, but they were a really corrupt, shadowy group who were manipulating politics and events to their benefit, and it was during this time that he earned the nickname Tomahawk. Not to be confused with the Hawk pilot, Bill Folger. But in this series, Hawk is shot in the back and he actually ended up in a coma. And by issue 33 of the same series, we learned that Hawk was paralyzed by the attack. But there's also a plot twist. It wasn't actually Cobra Commander who shot him as it initially appeared. No. It was Zartan in disguise. It was the same series that introduced us to the Red Shadows, kind of a villain organization in the same vein as Cobra, who were pulled from the British Action Force continuity and introduced here. General Hawk had General Colton in command while he was in rehab and therapy, and Colton, who was portrayed by Bruce Willis on screen, was actually the original G.I. Joe, having been tasked by John F. Kennedy himself to create a new fighting force. Hawk and Colton were stationed at the Rock while the Baroness was being held and interrogated you can hear about that in my Baroness video, but this whole Devil's Due period is not canon. Like we always say, if it doesn't count if it's not Larry Hama. Same with the Transformer stories, but we'll save those for another video. In IDW's 2011 run, G.I. Joe, which is separate from A Real American Hero, which they'd pick back up a year prior with 155.5 and issue 156, which continued with Marvel's numbers, Hawk was officially retired from the G.I. Joes. He'd show up sporadically in the IDW run on the original volume of Real American hero, but he's mostly off the board now. The Sunbow cartoon, however, started with a different structure. Duke is the commanding officer with Flint as his second in command. But this was the first season. By season two, the show aligned more with its comic book counterpart, and not coincidentally, when season two premiered in 1986, this is also when Hawk's V2 figure was released. The show's new chain of command went Hawk, then Duke, then Flint, and then Beachhead, and this was clearly outlined in season two, episode one, which is part one of the amazing Arise, Serpentor, Arise multi-parter. In the show, and really the movie, Ed Gilbert, who's also, the, by the way, the voice of Blitzwing in Transformers, is the voice of General Hawk, and he brings in Sergeant Slaughter to whip the Joes back into fighting shape. As with others, there was some releases that gave Hawk different names. In Argentina, Hawk was released as Redback. In 2000, due to the trademarks being expired that we've talked about in other videos, Hasbro changed his name to General Tomahawk. And in 2004, his name became General Abernathy. In 1991, Hasbro recognized his rank on packaging and released him with the name General Hawk. Before this, his V1 figure was simply Hawk. Others, such as with Hawk, were released with vehicles. Hawk was released with the mobile missile system. In 82, he had straight arms, as did all of the line actually, but by the next year, he got the swivel arms, which of course allowed for greater articulation. In 1993, he was released as an armor tech, armor bot commander for Star Brigade. This version of General Hawk had a fun little neon pink laser rifle that you could get with it, or, or there's a black one too. A pressure regulated spacesuit that had this gold plated armor because, you know, hey, why not? The neon colors were super popular in the early 90s. I mean, look at 95 with Batman Forever, it's a perfect example of it. And then same with Captain Planet, you know, helping the environment. Of course, we got Star Brigade and the Eagle Warriors, but I'm really digressing here. We can't forget the G.I. Joe live action movie saw Dennis Quaid commanding the Joes as General Hawk. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one, my friends. The story of General Hawk. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and comments down below. Feel free to subscribe to be a part of all of our videos, new and old. Share this with your friends who like the G.I. Joes. If you have any suggestions that you want me to do for future videos, and you go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. It helps you, it helps me, and hey, it helps the algorithm. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.